So you guys, we're going to get started now. Uh, we have Sorna and Bouchon from Avi Networks uh, going to present. So let's give them a round of applause. So guys, take it away. Okay. Thank you very much. OK, it goes well. So welcome to the, first of all, thank you for the control team for inviting us here. Um, I'm Swarna Padila. I head the product marketing team at Abi Networks. And I have Bhushan here, uh, who is part of the technical marketing team in, um, at Abi Networks. I, we just will quickly walk through how we work on the web scale elasticity and how we can accomplish automation in terms of uh, an OpenStack deployment with our Open Control integration. I also have Ankit from the control team if there are any more questions. First of all, quick check. How many of you know what Avi Networks does? Wow, I'm impressed. Thank you. That's more than half of the audience. Awesome. Okay, so I'm good to go, right? I can, you, you, you all know about Avi Networks and I can leave. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, so, the one way your your knowledge about Avi makes it easier is that I can flip through my slides and just give it to Bushan for the detailed demo. Um, just to for those few of you that are not familiar with Avi Networks, we are a software load balancing company, and the reason why we kind of so start with software load balancing is because web scale is here for compute. So when you look at the storage and compute layers, it's elastic. You deploy the bits on any off-the-shelf servers, and you can reallocate, readjust the capacity or utilization based on the requirements on demand, on the fly. It's elastic. You use commodity servers, so you kind of bring your server investment, infrastructure investment down. You manage it as one because you have a centralized controller that can take care of all of these kind of resources, and it's highly automated. You get the telemetry or the visibility into what's going on so that you can then automate and readjust your resources, and it's elastic. However, when it comes to networking, there are single purpose appliances where the control plane and the management, uh, control plane and the data plane are fused together. It's not elastic, it's rigid. It's you configure or provision, or rack an appliance, it does only load balancing and not beyond anything beyond that. So, and you don't, it's kind of like a black box where you don't know what's going on inside it. Data goes in, data comes out, but you have nothing no kind of visibility in what goes on underneath it. So what we did was instead of having HA pairs in each environment, could be your uh, private cloud, public cloud, or container kind of environment, what we did instead of going with the fused approach was separate the management plane from data plane. We said that, okay, let's go with the kind of airport analogy where our airplanes become the data plane. They come in, they go out. That's all they do. The pilot just blindly follows the instructions from the air traffic controller, lands, takes off, boom, done. And then the control plane is centralized, similar to air traffic controller that sits off path away from the runways, sits off path, tells the pilots exactly at what height, at what speed they should start descending, to what gate they should arrive at, what runway they should be taking. And if there is already a plane at the runway, they know that. So they are going to divert the traffic to a different gate. They're going to divert the plane to a different gate. The, that's the kind of intelligence that ATC gives to the pilot. So the pilot doesn't have the, does, can only focus on bringing people in, like bringing packet in, bringing packet out. So the controller sits off path, has the cycles to munch through this telemetry that they get from load balancers, and then deploy these service engines either on bare metal, your private cloud, public cloud like OpenStack, OpenShift, uh, VMware environment containers, Kubernetes, Docker, or Mesos clusters, or even public cloud like AWS, GCP, and Azure. And because we have the visibility with what's going on, we can also integrate with the rest of the uh, management orchestration layer providers to make it even more extensible and automatic to uh, make it programmable for you guys to deploy uh, the applications or resources by um, automatically. And because we have the visibility, you can now get insights into if an application is slowing down, if there is high latency, what exactly is going down? And I get a notification when there is high latency. I get, an, uh, I get a notification or when, there, when there's a web server that went down. You get an alert. Your admin gets an alert. So they can take a quick and immediate uh, remediation steps rather than waiting for someone to point out and say that, hey, this is not working. 
And as opposed to physical appliances that can only scale up, which means that you can only buy more appliances, we are software, so you can either scale up, get to a bigger service engine, which is our load balancer, or you can scale out, add more service engines, or you can do a combination of both, but as your traffic increases on demand. And when your traffic receipts, you can kind of bring it back in, scale it back in, and free up those additional resources for um, any other purpose. So that's the kind of structure that Avi has. Now, coming with Open Contrail, how we integrate is, if you have an OpenStack deployment, we, at the configuration um, setup stage, we uh, take the input from the new, like we work with Avi Controller at the bottom, works with the Neutron server, takes all the credentials, like Keystone credentials or anything from the Neutron server, passes it on to the Neutron server, and the Contrail, uh, the Contrail client, it works with the Neutron server. It, it takes every update or every change that is passed on through the Neutron server, and then once you define the provider to be the Avi Networks, it has the intelligence, the service monitor has the intelligence to divert the traffic to Avi Networks as your load balancer provider. And how do we automate it? Kind of, we integrate with multiple projects, like I know this is an eye chart here, um, Horizon, Nova, Keystone, Neutron, and Elbaz. We have an Elbaz plugin and we support both V1 and V2. But what it does is, you provide the Keystone credentials and the location of the uh, Contrail server. And we use Elbaz, I mean, you can either use Elbaz or um, Avi API to set up the configuration. And after that, Avi controller takes care of the automatic deployment. We use Keystone to set up the user profiles. We spin up the service engine VMs, which are the load balancing VMs, as a Nova instant. And the correct tenant, we know where to place the load balancing instance, the VM. And we place it in the appropriate Neutron by talking to, uh, I mean, we place the VM in the appropriate network by talking to Neutron, getting the information from Neutron. And we also allocate the VIP and uh, using the Neutron API and binding the VIP to the secondary IP as well and associate the floating IP to the VIP. So all of these kind of additional processes which could be manual on auto-scaling load balancing fabric, like spinning up another load balancing, um, more additional load balancers or service engine as the traffic grows up. All of these are completely automated. None of these steps can have to be manual. And because we also get the analytics, because we, um, as I mentioned earlier, because we get the analytics, we can also integrate, we, ha we have integrated that into Horizon UI, so you can either add it as a tab in your Horizon dashboard or pull up the entire Avi dashboard into Horizon itself. And those are the kind of supported configurations. I know the last line is not visible probably at the end, but it supports Open Contrail and Juniper Contrail, 3x and above. But um, we support pretty much everything on, um, from an OpenStack perspective. Just to give you a quick sense of how easy it is, this is a snapshot of the Avi dashboard. There is just one checkbox over there that says integration with Contrail, and that will kind of take you down the path of setting up the Contrail server as well. You just need to give the location of the Contrail server. It talks to the Contrail server on the back end. And here are a couple of screenshots that I have here, but I think Bhushan will show it um, in his demo as well. You can either bring just the analytics as part of your Horizon dashboard. This is the Avi analytics where it shows the per hop latency, as you can see it from when your client hits the load balancer, when your load balancer sends it to the server, server sends it to the app, app, app server, and then the database, how fast is the data being fetched it. Um, so it gives the per hop latency and it gives the granular details at the bottom per transaction. Could be a significant log, could be a non-significant log, but we get the transactions or the visibility for each and every log that we collect. And this is the other uh, way you can get it where you have your entire Avi dashboard in your horizon itself, as opposed to this, where you just have it as a tab, just the analytics as a tab. So there are two ways of deploying Avi. And with that, I will stop and have sure. Bushan show the demo. Any questions? Sorry, before I let Bushan. Yes. Uh, that will be the question. Sorry. sorry? Uh, can you repeat the question again? Uh, how many compute nodes approximately are on the open control control? Uh, I mean, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, if you can comment on it. I'm not sure about the scale uh, in terms of that right now. Uh, I'm sure we have, uh, have the numbers up there uh, on our KB. Uh, 
let me get back to you with that answer. Uh, yep. Uh, okay. Moving on to the demo. So uh, like we saw in the presentation, uh, we can either uh, run uh, directly uh, with our LBAS plugin and configure the load balancing using uh, normal LBAS, or else we can have the whole AV dashboard right in, in the Horizon UI, like you see out here, uh, so that uh, the people can directly use uh, AV's API uh, on the UI. Uh, so everything we, we, we do on the UI and CLI are, are backed up by REST APIs in the behind, uh, uh, in the backend. So, uh, so that users can directly use AV API to configure uh, load balancing with uh, much more richer features uh, than they get with uh, normal LBAS APIs. Uh, so what you see out here are uh, the same. Uh, so even if you uh, configure something using LBAS APIs, uh, we map them to uh, in AV. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, see how easy it is to create a new uh, virtual service or a VIP. Uh, just name the and give some name to the virtual service. Test vs uh, vs, and we can uh, auto allocate uh, IP addresses based uh, from uh, the networks you have, uh, you have got. So I'm placing the VIP in the client network. I can also assign a floating IP. Real easy. Uh, we, are, we can uh, select servers. We can directly give the IP addresses or else select servers, uh, selecting them from a certain network. Just add the servers in to the load balancing pool and uh, choose what type of application you want. Is it HTTP, HTTPS, what kind of certificate you want, and just save. And uh, within seconds, the new application is up. If the uh, so AVI is. Uh, split up into two parts. Uh, there's a controller and the service engine. Uh, the service engine does the uh, main act of load balancing, the data uh, handles the data, data path. So if the service engine is already available, uh, or, or the only thing the VA controller has to do is push the configurations and connect the service engine to correct networks based on the VIP and the backend pool members and the uh, service is up. If not, it will go ahead and deploy a new service engine and then connect it and get the application up. Uh, this is just a brand new application, but let me move to uh, another application I have out here already running, which also has uh, a lot of traffic uh, on it. Uh, so as you can see, we can show uh, complete end-to-end -end time, uh, not just uh, on real time, but uh, also past historic uh, data. Uh, the amount you can uh, show out here depends on the size of the disk you allocate to the service engines. Uh, but uh, uh, and uh, not just the whole, uh, we can give a kind of a summary of uh, what's the client latency look like, what, what the server RTT is, what kind of app response you are, you are getting, and what data transfer is, uh, not just as a, as a summary view, but also at each and every point in the time uh, on the graph. Uh, if you want to dig in more uh, how your application is performing, you can uh, switch to logs. Now we classify the logs uh, as into two parts, uh, significant and non-significant. The uh, significant ones are the ones which end up in uh, 404s or uh, some kind of errors uh, or take a really long time than expected uh, to complete. Uh, uh, and the non-significant ones are the ones which uh, end up with 200s uh, or with, with, uh, end up with, uh, without any errors. So let me... So uh, you can uh, explore even more. For example, you can expand one of this. Uh, if I expand one of these logs, we see that it's coming in from uh, Mexico. What kind, of, what kind of OS it's uh, using, what kind of uh, browser the uh, client is using, or uh, the certificate type, the TLS version, what, uh, which load balancer on your, uh, uh, on your setup uh, did the traffic hit, which backend server pool uh, uh, it went to, and what was the uh, kind of URL. Uh, a lot of information out here. Uh, everything you see out here in blue uh, we, we, uh, can be fil uh, can be filtered uh, in a Google search kind of a way. Uh, for example, if you want to search all the 404s you got on your application, you just uh, with just one click you get uh, all the uh, all the transactions which end up in 404s. Uh, more than that, uh, we can do SSL termination. Uh, uh, we can do SSL re-encryption uh, so that we have end-to-end -end SSL. Uh, of we have uh, really feature rich uh, when it comes to layer seven uh, features like content switching, uh, redirection uh, based, uh, based rules. Uh, 
and on the analytics side, we also uh, can show you a really good. Uh, we can give you a really good overview of what kind of certificates your uh, clients are using, what kind of TLS versions they are using, uh, how well your uh, application is performing, uh, uh, if your application is facing some kind of attacks, uh, what kind of attacks they are. Uh, for example, out here, I'm, uh, my application is uh, getting simpler attacks. And uh, using the uh, layer three policies, we can also, uh, with just one click, block any of the attacks right, right then and there. Uh, so uh, that, that, that was all I had for uh, our demo out here. Uh, if you guys have any questions regarding AVI, um, I'm free to answer them. Over here. All right. Hey. Yeah. Uh, so we talked a little bit about the spinning up of the Avi instances, whether the control plane or the data plane. Uh -huh. um, and it sounds like they're virtual machines right yes. now. Is that correct? Yep. Is there any uh, plans for containerization in the future? Uh, we already uh, uh, support containerization. We work uh, as a container in OpenShift, uh, as a Docker container in OpenShift Cloud or uh, Kubernetes or Mesos uh, environment. So Excellent. we do have the support. Did you want to show the scale up? Sorry? Scaling up. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, how to set up auto scale or those kind of things. Okay, sure. Uh, so uh, we also have uh, uh, intelligence of setting up uh, something, uh, uh, auto scaling our uh, application uh, based on a CPU utilization. Uh, let me move to tenant view. So here okay. in this tenant view, it also you can see the list of tenants when he switched. Shows that you can provide self-service provisioning for your application team. So when your application team is ready to move from local development to, uh, sorry, let me just local development to um, either production setup or testing or even just production migration, they can take their load balancer and set up and provision their own load balancer instead of waiting on a networking team. So you have these agile methodologies for app development, but once you go to app deployment, you kind of slow down. So it's kind of like rushing faster to slowing down, only to slow down, to be slowed down by the networking team. So instead, you can provision self-service load balancing uh, slivers for them so that they can provision their own load balancing by the time they're ready for um, deploying their application as well. And this is the auto scale? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so sure. uh, in Avi, we have a concept called service engine group, uh, which is uh, just a logical grouping of the service engines uh, based on common properties. Uh, so uh, in that, you can uh, set the kind of uh, HA mode you want. We support a normal legacy active standby. There is a, then there is an active active mode in which uh, you can have two or more service engines running active active active. Uh, it need not be just two. Uh, then there is N plus M buffer mode, uh, which is, I would say, most preferable because in that we have N service engines running active and M buffered. So the buffered service engines uh, constantly sync with the uh, on the connection uh, states, but they don't uh, take part in the traffic. As soon as one of the uh, active service engine goes down, we can use one of the buffer. Uh, uh, buffer automatically takes over the traffic. So uh, for, uh, while scaling out in active, active, or N plus M buffer mode, uh, we can use uh, a feature called auto rebalance in which we can program uh, the uh, CPU threshold uh, which, you, uh, which AVI controller uh, looks out for. Uh, if the CPU of the service engine goes above a certain threshold, it can scale out the application to multiple service engines. If, uh, if the traffic goes down, the CPU utilization decreases again, it will scale that back. And um, if it sees that some of the service engines are just lying around, uh, handling no traffic, it, it, can, it will also delete those uh, VMs so that uh, you save on your uh, infrastructure resources. Oh, uh, yep. Uh, and uh, apart from uh, automatic scale out and scale in, you can even manage uh, per uh, application wise, you can scale out manually. Uh, you can. Uh, if you see it, uh, your current uh, service engine has some problem, you can even migrate it out to another service engine. Uh, pretty easy. I, everything uh, in the UI is like a few clicks away. So, any more questions? Yep. I wanted to. Okay. So, if you have a question, can you say it on the mic? So, 
is there anything special in this with open control versus standard um, open stack neutron um, integration? Uh, so uh, the part where you know, which we integrate with open control is uh, so we provide automation in OpenStack. Uh, whenever a new, uh, you configure a new virtual service, we have uh, the responsibility of configuring the service engine, connecting to a proper next and all. So that's where the Open Contrail uh, integration comes in. We uh, read in the data from uh, Open Contrail uh, and so that we know what, uh, what overlay networks we need to connect it to, how can we program the floating IPs, uh, to to the webs and uh, and all that's that's the part where we talk with Open Control. Is it specialized for Open Control or is it just on the neutral? It is specialized. It is. Yeah. Just on that uh, note, so would you say that that uh, that would be maybe a vertical network for Ami? Uh, Uh, yes, I would say. I would say it's an added, uh, added benefit when you have extra features uh, which Avi provides uh, over the, over, uh, with open control, uh, extra features of load balancing which you uh, won't get with, if you go, uh, go with a normal LBAS uh, running with open control. And, uh, Yes. So is this just to make sure that Avi works with open control? Or yes. Is it actually providing you overall more than what you could do with OBS alone and Avi? That's the question, basically. No, but the, uh, that was your question as well, right? Well, um, I think that if you're just using a different API or, or um, because directly we could just use the neutron API and get all the capabilities that you want from neutron, and in that case, you are Yeah, so I think what you're trying to say is like, can we pick and choose? Like, absolutely. You can do one without the other and vice versa. Um, some of the things that you get when you integrate, though, is like your IP address management, for example, is simplified. You give unified visibility to all your flows because like Avi will provide that, but they're more like layer four and above. Mm -hmm. uh, in the contrary, you can get it from below. So um, it's kind of like the split world, but when you put them together, then you can pretty much look to one central source for all your traffic flows and management from like a network perspective, and then kind of like dump the application concerns off to the application team. So there's a kind of nice differentiation of like separation of concerns um, that, that does help. Well, there's ECMP on top, okay. uh, which is nice. Uh, if you want to scale out with one IP address across many instances, um, that is something that I think is pretty unique mm -hmm. to Contrail. Yeah. So that's just round robin, was that actually all the standard API hashing algorithms are supported? 
Yeah, so when you went the ECMP layer, uh, it's basically like uh, whatever your gateways are configured for. So you're probably looking at a standard like five tuple hash there. Um, but where you want like an Avi network controller um, or HA proxy or something, depending on your level of sophistication, is if you want to do like a graceful drain uh, example of, of like a node or have a specific like health check that says, oh, this is returning a 200 and I will take action if I get something else. Uh, ECMP is just blind. It's just like, you know, here's an I, here's traffic, just, it's a fire hose. Um, well, you get much finer grain control and like uh, application understanding to um, you know, help you manage that. Especially if like blue green deploys, things like that. Uh, real valuable. So for any application kind of deployment cycle, you do the local development, you do the test, and uh, production setup, blue green kind of deployment canary testing, and then move it to the production slowly and gracefully. And it can be either for applications or even for load balancers or even for web servers. So if you are trying to get off of one web server to another, you can do the graceful migration of slowly doing it, testing it out, and because you have the visibility from Avi load balancers, you know exactly where it's going wrong. So for example, I, I'll give you my own uh, living example. I'm in product marketing, and I am not an engineer that can go into the weeds. When we were migrating our Avi Networks website from one web server to another, we had to make sure that it doesn't go down because we just did that last week during Red Hat Summit when we had a press release going out. So we had to make sure that the graceful migration happened. And when there were four or four errors from random URLs that I didn't know exist because that I didn't know were existing because they those landing pages or those specific URLs were set up before I joined Avi more than a year and a half ago. Uh, I saw from the dashboard that there was a 404 error. I looked it up. Okay, these are all the 404 errors coming from these clients or these uh, random requests that are coming in. I could immediately set up a redirect from Avi console that if a request comes in for this URL, redirect the traffic to this URL. So it was quick, easy, even for someone in product marketing to do that. It was just easy for me. Sure. Yeah, that's, that's generic. Um, yeah. Yes. Control. Right. So. So if you go with Contrail for your layer two and three network automation, we extend that kind of network automation and application automation through L4 through L7. So you get a complete network automation from um, layer two to three to four through seven. All right. Any, yes. Do you have support for DPDK? Yes. Oh, yes, Contrail? Yep. Yeah. Any other questions? Anything else you wanted to add, Ankit? Okay, so we are right at the um, marketplace at booth 821, so if you're coming out from Sheraton, can walk through the other exit, we are on the left. Uh, walk by the booth if you have any other detailed questions on how Avi works um, in for, for kind of to a further extent integration with Contrail. We can uh, show you the demo or just OpenStack or even outside of OpenStack if you have a kind of an on-prem deployment, we can show you how uh, Avi works on an on-prem deployment. And we have cool shirts like OpenStash and we also have an acronym that goes um, something like Beyond Application Delivery as a Service. I will let you guys figure out how to spell it, I mean how to say it. Um, Load balancers are traditionally called application delivery controllers, but we go beyond application delivery. So we kind of came up with the acronym called Beyond Application Delivery as a Service. So we have the t-shirts. We also have the fidget spinners, if you're interested in fidget spinners for the kids. So come over to the booth. We can show you more demos if you want. All right. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>